Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of this Organized Life podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau, and I am so glad that you are here. Um, I'm going to talk to you about today's topic and bring out today's guests. So the topic of the day is downsizing, staging, and moving, which I know all sort of go hand in hand. There's a lot of moving parts with that. And I asked, well, I have two of our experts that are in our SBO partner program. For those of you who are not familiar, our SBO partner program is our network of professional organizers from all over the country who own and operate their own independent companies, but they're endorsed by SBO. We do one-on-one mentoring with them. We do group coaching and all of our organizers are essentially vetted by um, by us. So if we have our SBO stamp of approval, you know that there's somebody who we know, like, and trust. So if you live in a specific geographic market and are looking for an in-home organizer, check out any of our SBO partners and you know that like they have our double thumbs up. And so joining me was supposed to be the duo from Curated Spaces, Linda and Betsy. But unfortunately, Betsy had a family emergency, so she is unable to be here. So Linda's going to be in the driver's seat for this. But the reason why I invited them to join us is they do a lot of work specifically with clients who are in that season of life. They are moving, they are downsizing, and they have developed their own system to streamline that process and really like niche down in that area. And again, I've talked many times about the spectrum of organizing. So if anybody's listening out there, like a quick teachable moment for people who might be thinking about starting a professional organizing business, you don't have to be a generalist and do all of the things. I think when you get into doing this, you'll find the parts of the organizing world that you enjoy and that you're good at and other parts that you're not. And I know for me, like moving, unpacking, packing is not my jam. So whenever I find somebody that is really passionate about that, as good with that, has like a solid system in place, like I want to refer that person to my clients. And be- Betsy and Linda have definitely kind of found that as their niche. Not that that's the only thing that they do because they do other stuff as well. But I figured as experts in that area, let's come and learn from you about some of the tips and strategies that you've done with your clients that if you're at home and you maybe are in that season of life, you can start to incorporate in your own world. So without further ado, let me welcome my new friend or not my new friend, my old friend, Linda to the show. Hi, Lori. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm sad Betsy's not here. I She's know. my other half. <laughs> I know. It's really, and unfortunately, it's like we've rescheduled this call. We've rescheduled this so many times, people. I, I, It, it pained me, but this, uh, you know, th- she's healthy. She's good. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, an unexpected mishap that happens in life, and we have to roll with it. So, Betsy, when you're listening to this <laughs> or watching this, we miss you, and Thankfully, you've prepped for this call, so you you are going to have Betsy's wisdom and insights as well as we go through this. But before we get started kind of going into like the nuts and bolts of the episode, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about you and Betsy and mm-hmm. about your business? Sure. So Betsy and I have known each other since our kids were in preschool. They were very good friends, and they're 25 now. And when um, the kids went to college, their freshman year, Betsy and I met for coffee, and we cried. We missed them. And we said, what are we going to do? I wanted to pivot in my graphic design career, and Betsy was a preschool teacher. And we heard of this thing called professional organizing, and we're both very buttoned up. And we thought, oh, maybe that would be fun. Let's try it. And we signed up for NAPO classes. So we got, um, we did all the classes on NAPO and 
we sort of dove head first. The bakery that we actually would meet at was our first client. And so our first job was organizing baking pans and sprinkles and moving, you know, these giant baking bakers wrapped in the basement of the bakery. And we were hooked. I love, we were, and we I got, love that we story. We got free coffee too. <laughs> I love that story because so many businesses, especially in the entrepreneurial space, were birthed or developed mm-hmm. in coffee shops, you know? Yes. And I, I, and I just, I love it because again, it just goes to show like, things don't have to have a specific linear way that they evolve. And, um, and I think that's, and I love the fact that the bakery paid it forward and, you know, oh, yeah. guys to do it, which is, yeah. which is just awesome. So, and how many years ago was that just kind of how long have you guys been doing this? That, that was six years ago. So, and yeah. Six years ago. So started the business, started getting momentum, a pandemic happens, you roll through that, continue to go on. And how has your business like grown and changed throughout that evolution of six years? So it's interesting. I think um, we have a great community here in South Orange and Maplewood. And and a lot of our clients came from word of mouth. And the pandemic was at the beginning, of course, it was crazy. We thought, let's go online. How quick we do virtual. But then what happened is this boom in the real estate market of people selling their houses because the market just, you know, was sky high. People were getting so much money. And we know a lot of realtors in town and and they would call us in right before the staging was happening because it would be, oh my God, we have to clear this room to get the pictures. And and so we gained an expertise in in uh, clearing the clutter before the staging. And then the client was so happy with that, they asked us to help them pack. And so it sort of just snowballed after that. We, we got really good at figuring out, you know, the cadence of packing, the um, emotional part. How do you handle, you know, clients who are at all different stages of life? We were working from everything from young families to um, elderly people who were downsizing because this was the best time for them to sell their house. So um, we definitely learned a lot, you know, as we went along and developed some great uh, systems and techniques and hacks and advice. (laughs) Yeah. So for anybody listening out there, and again, I know there's no right or wrong, but, and we've done episodes before on moving and prepping for move and the post side, and they've been wildly popular, which is why, again, I feel like it's always great to revisit these conversations. At what point, it seems like you're brought in sort of earlier in the process. What, if someone's listening out there and they're like thinking about doing this, like what point does it make sense to bring you in? If there someone was going to hire somebody as a professional organizer to help with the decluttering to stage or pack? So I would say the moving and selling process takes about two months usually. And I would advise bringing us in at the beginning. Actually, Betsy and I are in a constant state of, we're going to be moving soon. So what can we get rid of? And even clients who aren't moving, we sort of advise them on that too. Like, you know, think about one day you are going to be moving. So what are you keeping? What are you holding on to? Um, So I would say the earlier, the better you can bring us in, but Usually the the selling and moving process takes about two months. And if you bring us in at the beginning, we can help you streamline the entire process. I love that. And so I actually just have a question about, so if you're bringing somebody in and I know the housing market is like things are flying off the shelves, right? So it's yeah. still like the quick turnaround. People aren't, mm-hmm. houses aren't sitting, inventory's low for a lot of people. Um mm-hmm. But when you are removing items for staging purposes, there's almost like, do you have like a holding pattern? Like, what is the process? Are, are you advising? Because I'm always like, I'm a big anti-storage facility, but oh, I'm yeah. thinking about, <laughs> you know, the logistics, right? I'm a very nuts and bolts kind of person. And so when people are bringing in to stage stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so that you can get it and you're hopefully editing as you go, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. But is there a temporary holding place? Like, what do you advise your clients to do, whether they're you're just consulting and telling them what to do or you're actually doing it? 
So usually there are spaces in your house that you can hide things. We are really good at finding hiding places because at all costs, we try not to tell clients to get a storage facility um, before they move because that's where things go to die in our opinion. For but, sure, um, for sure. For instance, you know, someone looking at a house will not open anything that isn't built in. So a dresser or an armoire or something, you could stash stuff in there. Um, cabinets and all of that stuff will usually be opened, but some closets you could just store in the back, some boxes or bins, you know, there's, there's always place. And then basements are usually allowed to be a little more, not cluttered, but have bins or, or boxes in them. So basements are a good place. Attics we don't recommend because that's a very hard place to access usually. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to put too much stuff in there because then when you really have to pack for moving, you have to get it out and it's cumbersome. So basements, closets, drawers of furniture, under beds, there's places. No, that makes total sense. I, I love that. Now, you guys have a color-coded labeling system that you <laughs> have come up with. And I love hearing other people's strategies, hacks, tips, whatever you want to call them. Can you just walk us through what that what that is, what that looks like. Sure. So we've been on the back end, a lot of unpacking of moves. And we noticed that, first of all, it's kind of like a snow globe. You have all your boxes set up in your old house and you're like, I know where everything is. And then they go on the moving truck, you get to your new house and it's like, everything's shaken up. You have no idea where anything is. A box is on top of another box and the label that what's written in the box is covered by the other box. There's nothing on the side. You don't know what room it's supposed to go in. So us being very visual people, we and we love color. We found this site called Chroma Label that has these sticker dots. And we thought it would be great if we can identify the rooms that items are going to in the new house. So we often ask for a floor plan, plan of the new house. And we label everything with dots on every side of the box and on the top of the box with the room that it's going to. So we color code rooms based on the new place. So kitchen is kitchen, obviously, but sometimes there's more bedrooms or less bedrooms, or there's a specific closet or a client will have a specific place that they want a box to go to. So we'll create a color coded key with these dots. And we like big dots because then the movers can see them. So when we supervise a move, we're having one person stand at the door and direct traffic. So orange dots are kitchen, red dots are primary bedroom, et cetera, et cetera. And um, then we can, you know, navigate where things are. We know what's in each box. And this is another thing. In addition to the dots, we write very specifically what's in each box on the top and on one side. So when you know what, where the box is going, one side is usually enough to label you know, and we're specific, like we don't just say kitchen, we say cast iron pan, um, you know, other pots and pans and, um, you know, oven mitts, or, for instance. So, you know, we try to be as specific as possible, knickknacks from the office. And, you know, sometimes we write even where it's from, so that the, it jogs your memory as to what it is exactly. Yeah, you guys are really getting detailed. And I think that's one of the, <laughs> which is great. No, I think it's great. It's, it's, I always tell people, you know, you're, you're putting in the time on the front end, you're putting in the time in the back end, right? So you're being mm -hmm. very intentional at the beginning of the process mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that when they're going to unload, you don't have to go through 50 boxes to say, where's my kitchen gadgets? Because you have a box that's not just labeled kitchen, but you're like kitchen gadgets or whatever it looks like. Um, I love the tip about putting the dots on every side of the box because mm -hmm. I know it almost sounds obvious, but again, like you would think things, like you said, things get moved around. And so what's the front of the box in the, you know, point A is the back of the box or the top of the, or whatever in the, when in its final destination. So the fact that all bases are covered mm -hmm. makes it really easy to retrieve what it is that you're looking for. So I, mm -hmm. I love that. Um, for people that are doing it on their own, right? So you guys have the 
the mental and physical stamina to like pace yourself, <laughs> know what to do. You've done enough of these that you have your rhythm. But for mm-hmm. somebody that's saying, okay, I'm here and I'm doing it my own on my own. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I have little kids. I have limited time to do it. Are there specific things that you, you know, like give yourself, you know, certain like to do it in a time frame or go room by room. Like what are some, some things that will stop people from the burnout? Because what I can, what I can imagine happens is that people are like, this is great. I'm going to start doing all this. And then they get tired or they get Mm -hmm. frustrated or they get overwhelmed and they wind up just dumping stuff in and going kitchen, you know, (laughs) and calling it a day as opposed to being methodical and weeding out as they're going along, really thinking about where do I want this to live? Because maybe, you know, you're going from a big house to a smaller place and you're like, I don't know where this is going to live because it lived in my formal dining room in my current house, but I don't have a formal dining room. So they don't know. And so the decision fatigue is really big. Mm -hmm. If someone's listening out there, what what do you, how can you coach them through this? Well, I would definitely say pace yourself. It's an exhausting process when it's your stuff. And I would say the first place to start is to figure out what do you feel like, what what do you not want to pack and at worst unpack again? So imagine you're going to pack this stuff in a box, you know, maybe some dishes that were inherited from an aunt and you feel like you've got to hold on to them. You're going to have to pack that whole set and then you're going to have to unpack it. So that's a kind of a good way to make a decision. Do I really want to put that much time and energy into these things? So I would say start with the stuff that's most obvious that you don't want to bring with you and don't think you could do it all in a day or a week you know, go slowly room to room, start with the easiest stuff. Um, maybe in the basement, there's a lot of stuff you can probably get rid of or a closet, you know, it's up to you, but, but start small and then um, pace yourself, you know, and, and do a realistic amount of things per day. Don't expect that, you know, you can get everything done quickly. It's a very emotional process. I was going to say, it's probably, especially if you're talking about downsizing as opposed to families that are in the, in a growth phase, right? People that are moving to a, either a bigger house or a new house, or, you know, I think there's, it's a different emotion because you're in a season of accumulation. You know, you have a growing family, you have a lot of things, but when you are doing a downsize, it's not only do you have to remove more things because math, like you don't have Mm -hmm. as much space, but again, there is, there's a lot of identity that is tied to their things. So, so when you are working with a client, how does that, and I know no clients, you know, no two clients are exactly the same, but Mm -hmm. are you like, how do you offer your clients support? Like that emotional support, as opposed to the in addition to the the practical, actual moving? I think especially with elderly clients, you know, I think they're at a stage in life where they feel their voice isn't heard anymore. Mm. And they're, they're sort of being cast aside. Like, you know, you're, you're not the center of the family anymore. It's really important to give them the time and space to hear their stories and understand the importance of what those things are that they've lived with for so long. And, and that's actually what we find so interesting. I mean, we've heard the most amazing stories and spending time with with people who have, you know, lived such interesting lives because everybody's life has interesting stories is a real gift for us. So I, I say we love listening to the stories and, and we have, because there's two of us, this is a great thing. One of us can, can you know, calmly sit with the person and, the, and then we'll sort of pass this thing and we'll say, okay, that's donate, that's pack, you know, Betsy or someone from our team will be hustling and packing and getting stuff done. So before the client knows it, there's boxes, they're labeled, all their stuff, you know, is, is very, very clearly labeled. So um, I would say listening to the stories is a key part. And I love that. it might, 
it might slow things down, but that's okay. You know that it's going to take time. It's a catharsis. And again, you're talking about a lot of uh, history that's involved. Uh, yeah. Um, I just have to add, we just worked yeah. with somebody and we found an invitation to the inauguration of JFK in her stuff. No way. Yes. And she went, oh, that's where that was. It was the best. So we put all that stuff in a special box, you know, we said, this is, this is special stuff. And it was very carefully guarded. And she brought that in person to her new place, but it was amazing. Wow. And I was just, I was literally, my next question was, do you have any specific stories <laughs> that maybe you could share with us of like some interesting, you know, things. And that for sure is, yeah, is one of them. Um, so getting a friend, I would think if you are not in a position to mm -hmm. hire outside help, maybe getting somebody to help you listen as you are going through it. I think sometimes we can just, whenever we're doing things, we kind of just can get in our own heads and then get like get stuck in that state of arrested development. And so mm -hmm. having that, uh, you know, another, a friend or a couple of friends who are trusted that are going to sit there and you know, looking at where people are good at, it's like, okay, you, even if you're just like, okay, I'm done with this, having that person to just be there to remove it from you so that you can just stay, I think is so important because every time you have to break momentum, it's almost like a reset. I think about that in the organizing process all the time. I don't know if you find that as well. Absolutely. That's a really important point. So we often have to focus clients from getting up and going into another room. So we try to keep them seated or, you know, whatever in that one space. And so, yes, if you have a friend and you can basically stay focused on the one space that you're working on, and then the friend can um, move, you know, make a pile for donations, or if you're having an estate sale, put that in the room where all that stuff is going. If you get up and move to another room, you're going to get distracted mm -hmm. and you're going to end up being, you feel like you haven't accomplished anything because nothing is complete. So yes, having a friend is a great idea or two. And even some of those friends might want to take some of the things you don't want anymore. So there's definite lots of pluses with that. Yeah. I love it. I, I get this image in my mind of like a computer that's got multiple tabs open and <laughs> you're sitting there, you know, I like in my world, it's like, okay, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to write like a blog post or, or concentrate on something. And I, instead of just being focused in on the task that I'm doing, I click on the different tabs and like, let me see what's going on on Instagram. Let me go and check this. Let me go over here. And all of those distractions, every time I come back to that word, you know, every time I come back to that Google doc or whatever, I have to do a reset. And so it's slowing me down because I'm breaking that chain of thought. And that's just kind of like mm -hmm. almost the image that I get when you're trying to get through something like that, you need that intentional focus. So that redirection is really, really a key part that I think doesn't always get, I think it often gets overlooked when, when people, when we're talking about the benefits of working with somebody else is just having that person there to kind of, you know, rein you in. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you could set that up with your friend because your friend could also be an enabler. <laughs> exactly you, could, you know end up being doing something else but yeah you gotta call the right people you gotta you gotta <laughs> know your friends right like you got like right. I know I'm I'm the I'm the honest friend like I'm that person that when my friends are like I need the truth I need you to tell it to me straight they yeah. come to me that's you know I'm that person they're like if I need somebody to like sit and stroke my back they're not coming to me they're like I'm the tell like <laughs> it is so you know your people get the ones that are going to be kind but also going to be mm -hmm. you know action oriented, you know? So I think that's so important. <laughs> okay. Before we go into our wrap up, where, where can people find you? I know, obviously you guys are located in New Jersey, coincidentally mm -hmm. in my old town, or the next <laughs> town over, which I love. Um, where can people find you if they want to find you on social media or if they geographically live in your neck of the woods? Well, we have an Instagram curated spaces organizing it's called, um, and we are, we also post on Facebook and, um, in our local Facebook groups, you know, there's a lot of mention of us. You can search for, you know, looking for a professional organizer. We have a website, 
curatedspaces.art. And um, yeah, and yeah, Mostly and you can also to... find them on. You can also find them at Simply Be Organized as one of our preferred. Absolutely. So if you again, we'll drop all the links in our show notes on the podcast page for all things curated spaces. Linda and Betsy, the dynamic duo, um, and you can connect up with them there. And definitely, lots and lots of great information. And um, I just I love it. I love the fact again, your story of you are going through this, even the evolution of your business, going through this new phase of life, moving into empty nesting, rethinking, what do I want to do next? What do I want this next chapter of our lives to look like? And tapping into something that you're both good at, that you're both passionate about, that you both have the skill set, and you're doing it together with your friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I absolutely, I love it. I love everything about it. So, um, connect up with them. Thank you so much for all of these tips. We're going to move. Um, all right. So normally we ask, we would ask both of you guys. So I don't know um, if you're going to answer for Betsy or, okay. or not, or you could just answer for yourself, but we love um, finding out a little bit about our own, our guests and kind of what makes them inspired. You've obviously inspired us. If you're watching us on YouTube, you could see, Linda's got a beautiful display of books organized behind her. So I know she's a reader. Um, love getting book recommendations from our guests of a book that's maybe been inspirational or transformational, or maybe just a book that you really, really enjoy that you want to just recommend to our listeners. So let us oh, know. I have a book. It's called... <laughs> The Swedish Art of Aging Exuberantly. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, I've never she, heard of that. She wrote The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, which I'm sure people have heard about. My my very good friend gave me that book. It's funny and it's poignant and it's got really good tips in it just about what you surround yourself with in can life. Can you say the and title again? Because I'm trying to write it down so I can put it the, in our... The Swedish Art... Uh -huh. of aging of aging exuberantly okay aging exuberantly okay which is a great word i love it is <laughs> that that's a that's a good spelling bee word um i love it and we've done an episode on the whole art of the swedish death cleansing so mm -hmm. great i love it we'll definitely link to that in our um in our show notes and then <laughs> We always wrap up, and I love this question specifically for professional organizers because even though we all know that you're human like everybody else, there's this misconception that we have it all together and our houses are perfect and our lives are perfect. Things are never disorganized or out of place, but we know that life happens to all of us. It doesn't matter you know, who you are, what you do. So in this season of your life, where do you feel like you were the most organized and where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? Well, the most organized, both Betsy and I use our houses as test sites. So often my family will be laughing because I'll open a closet and all of a sudden I'll start taking things out and my daughter will go, oh no, she's at it again. And, um, you know, things will be in different places and, and, and my family will say, okay, where are some of the pots and pans now? And I said, well, I was trying a new rack. Yeah. So, I love um, <laughs> So yes, both Betsy and my house is quite organized, maybe too organized. Um, and I would say, where are we a hot mess? Well, that's easy. <laughs> the administrative part of our business, we're, we're both very creative people and numbers and just invoicing and all of that is, is something we're not too fond of, but thank goodness for you, Lori, oh. and all your advice, because you've really helped us, you know, with QuickBooks and, you know, getting all of that set up so that, you know, there's so many apps that can do things for you. So, um, you know, getting those in line, um, has been really helpful, but yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Well, thank thank you for, again, your honesty, because I think it's refreshing. People like to feel relatable and know that, you know, everybody's got the areas that we're all a work in progress. And again, yeah, anytime you're running a business, I tell this people all the time as entrepreneurs, 
you're expected to wear all the hats, but that doesn't mean that you're good at all of those roles or they all come naturally to you. And that's to be expected. You got into your chosen profession, whether it's a professional organizer or an interior decorator or a plumber or whatever that looks like, because you have an interest and a skill in that doesn't mean that you know how to run a business. And so, um, you know, that's, <laughs> That's that. Give yourself a little grace on that. And again, happy to be a, a help in that area. But Linda, thank you so much. I'm so bummed. We'll have to bring you back when Betsy can be here. We'll do another episode with the both of you. Um, we miss you. I Betsy. hope so. Yes. <laughs> Betsy's, the, Betsy's the funny one. <laughs> Listen, you guys are great together, but we wanted to get this out. There's a lot of people, especially even if you're not moving right now and you're thinking about it, you know that this is something that's going to be happening. You can start that editing process now. That's one thing that we didn't say, but start it now. If you know, hey, I'm thinking that down the road, it might be six months, it might be a year. It's never too early to start paring down. Don't hold on to things just because. So again, this is a timely um, episode and- I hope that you guys like it. If you do, please share it with a friend. That is how our show grows through word of mouth. Just like Linda and Betsy's business has grown through word of mouth. That's how people find our show. When other people recommend us, refer us, subscribe, all those things. So we appreciate that. We appreciate you. And um, if you like our episode, we'll be back on Monday with our quick tip of the week. So until then, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. If this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.